Good morning, good afternoon. Carla here at iGroom I Dogs. You can visit my website at iGroomDogs.com. This is the first time that I'm going to try to record um, the grooming process. And this is my, this is my, um, uh, um, I want to call her my victim, but no, I don't want anybody to think I'm hurting anything. But okay, so this is, this is the baby that I'm going to be um, grooming today. Her name is Daisy. She's a long-haired chihuahua. It looks like she's got a little bit of terrier mixed in with her because she's got some coarser coat in there. But mom wants all of the the sticky, scraggly, sticky outies gone, and her cleaned up pretty good. So she's been bathed. She's been blow dried, um, and now I'm gonna groom her, and I'm gonna try to do this all on video. But we'll see how well this turns out. It's gonna be a little noisy. That's part of the problem with um, um, trying to record in this type of environment, right? Uh, we have equipment that actually makes noise. And so sometimes that noise um, right, covers our voices and you can't hear what we're saying. So I've never groomed Daisy before, so this is her first time with me, my first time with her. So she seems pretty compliant. She's got a little partner in the back. His name is Chooch. He is also a long-haired chihuahua, but with a lot, lot more softer coat, so he's not getting a whole haircut today. We're definitely going to give this a try. I like to show people Right, that dogs do not have to be manhandled to get them to comply with you. I'm shaving her pads, the pads of her feet, to get that hair off so she can get some traction when she's walking or running. Get rid of that hair. Maybe go the underside. Do this little the bum. But give her a nice little drop zone. I'll turn that around so you can see in just a second. Okay. So here's what I've done. All right, by drop zone. Excuse me, I'm going to show you the dog's butthole. But right, just cleared that hair out of that area so that um, right, we don't get any dingleberries or anything sticking to you. Um, those, sand, those, those areas that we need to keep clean, sanitary, so that's kind of what I'm doing under here, you can't see, just fur here, she's kind of small, hold on Daisy, so just getting that underbelly, like I say, that sanitary area, pretty easy. I've got little short legs, so that's why I'm using the cordless clipper. It's a little, it's a little less heavy and intrusive on her tiny little body. Pretty lightweight. I'm just getting the armpits. Yes, we shave armpits on dogs. Just like us ladies do. Get that wild stuff out of there. And get in these eyes. Very nice, Daisy. Good girl. Very nice. Cleaning up this little face area. Oh, I think there's a cute little dog under here. Hold on, Daisy. We got some more ones. Looking out. How about this side? Yep, of course. You got some to match. There we go. Okay. Alright. So continuing on with the um, cordless. I'm doing a yellow attachment on Miss Daisy today. I do believe this is about a half inch. Actually, five eighths of an inch. 
Can stand up a little bit, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna take her a little bit shorter than the yellow. That's not gonna do what I want it to do. So I'm gonna drop down one to the tan. Check my length. talking about three-eighths of an inch. Much better. I'm going to stand up a little bit, baby. This isn't so much, well, it's an all-over haircut. It's not so much, um, right, we're not changing her look. We're just getting rid of some of the messy, sticky-outy stuff. So it's more of a even up all over. Make it neat type of deal rather than picking a style and all that that goes with some of these haircuts. Oh, Daisy, I can't believe I called you a victim. Yeah. You're a good girl. She's doing very good. She's a little nervous. That's pretty common. She's in a new environment with a new person. And even though we try to make um, the grooming experience as pleasant as possible, some pets just will never like this. And that's fine too. We just do what we can with them. Me personally, I don't try to push them into doing something that they don't want. But it ends up leading to other bad behavior. But a lot of times I do say, right, part of my job, excuse my humor, but part of my job is negotiating with four-legged terrorists. Because to me, that's what they are. Not all of them. But right, they come with their own set of issues. Some dogs give no warning if they're going to bite. It's kind of dangerous. Some dogs like... Dave's partner in the back here. It's him. His name is Chooch. You can see a picture of him later. But um, like him, he's 14. And so when they get up in age, right, kind of like people, they get set in their ways and some of this stuff becomes too much for them. So the oldsters, right, I set aside extra time to do oldsters. So, okay, you can see that Daisy's haircut is shaping up very nicely, even though her head's coming out of this. Right, or she doesn't have so much of the sticky-outy stuff. There is a technique to dog grooming. When COVID hit, I think everybody and their mother and brother went out and bought flippers because they were out of stock in several stores across Pinellas County and uh, tried to groom their dogs themselves and um, find out right, it's just not that easy. Starting with, they probably bought a clipper, brought it home, turned it on, tried to shave their dogs. And what they first find out is the blade that they have, that the clippers normally come with are a very short blade. Kind of what I used in her sanitary area. It's not a body blade. And so people that are not groomers do not do that, do not know that. And that blade that comes on those clippers is 
like I say, rather short. Um, probably not what people were looking for. So we've done lots of what I'm just calling COVID dogs. Not that they've had COVID, but they've been in the house with their people, not groomed or self-groomed. Um, they have a messed up coat because their owners, right, with the best intentions, don't realize that we have, myself, I have thousands of hours of training and experience. All right, I've been doing this for a very long time. I've been doing it over 20 years. Though I was out of the industry for a while, I'm a cancer survivor. So me, I'm just blessed to be here. Blessed to be back working with the babies. I uh, absolutely know that I'm making a difference, at least in my area. I'm not to talk bad about other groomers. I know some very good groomers in the area. I know some places that you that, that pet owners should avoid at all costs. I don't worry about that stuff. I just uh, stick to my line and worry about what I can control. And some of that is just right, being nice and gentle. Hold on, baby. Being nice and gentle and compassionate with these pets. They deserve it. We can't rush them through like they're just more money. We actually have to care about what we're doing. It's not always the case in some areas. In this stage, we're going to stand up a little bit. Good girl. Put this underbelly. Get all these sticky outies all cleaned up for you, baby. She just got a little shaky, right? This is a sens sensitive area for her. Getting a little jumpy. You're fine. You're fine, baby. Nothing that we do here should hurt the pet or make the pet uncomfortable. Okay, I'm going to go down. I'm going to slip the noose off. I hate calling it a noose, but it is what it is. Put that up there. Mm -hmm. Alright. I'm going to pass this head and behind the head. here because she's got some wild ones I want to get wild hairs Let's see these right I'm just taking them off with a reverse it cleans up that little head so that two weeks from now it's not right back to the way it was you're fine Daisy she starts coloring a little bit Sometimes the noise is irritating to them. Sometimes they just right, don't like what we're doing. But they comply for the most part. I'll just be happy if this video actually gets to see the internet because right, I, uh, earlier this year I bought a GoPro. And, um, well, that's a very nice camera. It's not going to work for what I need it to work for, so I upgraded my phone. So I'm actually recording this on a, not an Apple. What do I have? I have a Samsung 21. So it's got a lot of the options that, uh, has a lot of the same options that GoPro would. It just seemed like I needed to have a lot of storage either on my phone or whatever device I'm trying to uh, record from with the GoPro. So we've kind of not necessarily not used the GoPro, but 
for the most part. We're going to try out the cell phones and see how they work. Get some of this hair out of the way. I'm going to comb through here and see what we're working with. Oh, Daisy, it's looking pretty nice. I need to clean up the face a little bit. Clean up this chest. <coughs> Where are we at? We're in March. We're almost to the end of March, I think, tomorrow. Today must be the 30th. I think tomorrow's the last day of the month. Just cleaning it up a little day. We're in 2021. Just don't know. Uh, I know a lot of areas are, are still very restrictive due to the COVID. Not so much here. I do believe that, like, I'm not required to wear a mask here in my environment simply because I have, well, there's just me. I do have help on Sundays. But since, um, right, I don't have a thousand employees or five, uh, I'm not required to uh, do so um, because I have a lot of uh, senior customers. Right, I do mask up when somebody enters in. I try to try to be considerate of them. We're um, I think we're at a place now. I think the seniors have been able to get out and get their vaccinations. I believe At the end of next week they open it up for those that are. 40 years old, so 40 to, I don't know what they're doing, right? They kind of did it, they did our seniors first and then dropped that down. But me, I'm, uh, I think I just turned 52 in just a few weeks ago. And so I'm still not of an age where I can go get a COVID vaccination, and then once I get there, once it is available to me, I'm not certain that I'm going to get that vaccination. I have underlying health health issues that um, make me very weary of doing anything of the sort. So maybe further down the road when it's not so new, we'll see what happens. In the meantime, right, I'm going to try to take um, precautions as needed. Right, Daisy's nothing fancy today. She's fancy to me. She's probably fancy to her mom, too. For the average onlooker, it's just a... Uh, I would love to at some point I own a standard poodle. Alright. She's a bigger girl, so her grooming takes a bit longer. But it's more um, more detailed. At some point, I might like to take a video of how that all rolls out. There's lots of lots of techniques I can teach in just grooming my own animal. I love the poodles. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love them all. I love grooming poodles. Okay. Right, she 
still got some of these little wispy hairs. I'm gonna come back over that little spot. Over that. Back. Looking pretty good, Miss Daisy. I'm using guard combs. We usually go over the coat several times. Even when not using guard combs, a good groomer would go over that coat more than once. All right. So I'll see, she's still got some of these sticky outies. Daisy, you're doing so good for this. We're 20 minutes in, we're doing good too. not have a uh, YouTube channel yet. Some of that stuff is in the works. And my one person show here. So some of that stuff gets offset because I need to be grooming. And we do take pictures of each pet. Uh, when finished or if, uh, if we come across something like I've got a couple videos of some severe matting we um, take videos of that because matting 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 is a huge issue for dogs for dog groomers and pet owners kind of don't get it um, they want to avoid brushing their dog at all costs we have several people that um, go months without brushing their dog and then we'll bring that dog into the groom shop and can't figure out why it needs to be shaved. Well, there's only one way to get under those mats. That's usually with the clipper. Unless they're just a few tangles, there's a difference between having a few tangles and all over matting or matting that's down to the skin, right? There's some really bad things that can happen in attempting to remove mats, whether that's with a brush or with a clipper. Skin, skin can get damaged. Oh, Daisy, just cleaning up this little face. These are, these are chunkers. These are actually, I got these free. I, uh, where did I get them? I think I bought a pair of shears and it was buy one, get one free that day. And I took these chunkers. They're kind of uh, not what I normally would buy. Like I have another pair. These are actually more expensive. You can tell just one by looking at them. And if you could feel them, my more expensive ones are uh, more weighted. These are more of a professional steel, right? But I rarely use these for some reason. I like these. They're very lightweight. They're cheaper metal. They're like the paint is coming off them. Like I said, they were freebies, but I freaking love them. Like, I don't usually like those. I'm one of them where I believe that, right, you get your money's worth, especially with dog grooming equipment. Um, I think some groomers have gotten, not to talk bad about other groomers, but some of them have gotten really cheap and that's all they're using is um, cheap blades, cheap clippers, cheap scissors. And while that's great, it's not great for the animals, right, because in dog grooming, I remember when I was a baby groomer, Right, I worked with my my initial shears for so long, right, because they were comfortable and I was used to them and didn't want to spend a lot of money on something, one, that I couldn't touch or feel. And uh, I waited a while to actually 
upgrade my scissor situation, I actually found a brand called Guide. And uh, I like all of their shears, right? So I usually use Guide shears. And uh, when I upgraded to them, they were actually a game changer, right? I didn't realize that, that they were more expensive simply because they were better quality. So they give a smoother, a smoother cut. They were much, much nicer on my hands than a cheap pair. We as groomers, right? And, uh, get early onset of arthritis. Carpal tunnel is very prominent in uh, grooming because of right, all the use of our hands. So I'm just shaping her little, her little muzzle so it's still cute, just not all these sticky outies. She's cooperating very nicely. Let me see, baby. All right, so those ears and that face are fixed up. Get some of that crazy hair off here. Okay. I'm just going to even some of that up back here. Same thing. I like using the chunkers too because I got some foam in. I groom dogs. This is Carla. How can I help you? Hi, Carla. How are you? I'm all right. Good. I'm calling because I have uh, an appointment for my dog. At two o'clock. Two o'clock. Uh huh. I'm running a little bit late because I, I got to work late. Okay. Is there any way that I can still make it? Um, can you be here by 2.30? Oh, yeah. All right, perfect. Yes, we'll see you still today. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting us know. We'll see you soon. I appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sorry about that, but all right. So like I say, these ones are a little bit heavier. They're looking like they're a lot sharper too. Um, and so simply like on these smaller dogs, right? I would use these more on say a bigger dog, say if I was uh, taking down the back end of German Shepherd or I use these on my poodle's heads, but because they're heavier and they're longer, right? They're probably not a good tool on this particular dog because she's so petite. So we're going to have her tie stand up. I'm going to knock these nails off. With a little, little clipper. Hold on, baby. I don't know how she's going to do for nails, but they're really long. And she's going to do just fine. Woohoo! She's not hurt. Sometimes they just squawk because because they are afraid. Or somebody's taking them too short in the car. They like to give us a little bit of drama. Let's see. A little bit of blue claw on that side. Let me see a baby. That's good. That one's good. We are pretty short, so I'm just taking the tips off. Hold on, Daisy. So right, there's still a little bit of white on there. But right, we don't want to take them too short. Good. Okay, so we're going to do the back feet. Next baby, we're going to bend them backwards. That little hanging be cloth back here. And then also 
some of them are already pretty short. It looks like she might chew on them or she's scratching on something. Let's get them shortened. Hold on. We still take a look at every single one. The ones that need it. Okay. So now where am I at? Just tidying up these feet. After cutting nails. So back to talking about equipment, right? So, I don't know, there's some groomers that are just cheap. I don't know why. I like to have new things. Um, because having them actually shows in your work. And you don't know that until you know that. And so like I say, I used to be one of those where I was, I don't want to say tight with my money, I was very mindful of my money, but I didn't understand why I might want to, right, use a higher, higher grade pair of shears. So as I said, I was using um, Guybe, and right, just like every other company, um, companies will stop making certain, certain, uh, lines of products and so kind of the line of guides that I used to really like are not so so much available anymore so I switched up last year actually so these shares that I'm using I'm using actually um, the love line by Kenshi they're pretty lightweight sharp fin they're not flippers by flippers uh, some some scissors will have this on both sides simply right this is a curved shear so this is curved to the left if I'm holding my scissors properly okay right it's a proper finger hold for a pair of shears um, so they're curved to the left, right? So flippers actually allow you, because you would do the right side of the dog, you're holding your scissors upward, but if you're coming back around, then you'd have to hold your shears like this. Where flippers, you could actually, I just flip them around, I don't know if you saw that, now I'm kind of holding my shears the right way, but right, it's missing that finger flap, but it just makes it easier to come around right with a curved pair of shears this way flip them around and do this way otherwise they sell scissors that one 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 pair will curve right and the other will curve left they're not necessarily flippers but i don't see the need for for having a pair of shears like that and you can just flip your normal ones around. So she's tiny. She's tiny. I think she maybe weighs all of maybe five pounds if she's lucky. So I'm just again getting these sticky outies off those feet. Making them nice and nice and neater, right? So I'll just have these back feet. really trying to teach or demonstrate anything in particular today. I am just talking to be talking. Daisy, you're so almost done. You're almost done, baby. Alright, and as you can see, she's been very cooperative, not really fidgeting, just letting me let me do what I need to do. She 
got a little jumpy with those toenail trimming, but other than that, she's been a very compliant little guest. Not a victim, huh, Daisy? We kind of joke about that. My next victim. Another thing while I'm talking, um, I see a lot of people, I hear a lot of people looking for some place that does not kennel dogs. We are not one of those places. We will make exceptions. We will book accordingly, right? If your dog absolutely cannot be in a kennel, but for the most part, pets are kenneled for their safety here, right? We have a front door. People come in and out. Even though we do by appointment only, right? People that work in the strip mall will stop in. People that, uh, are driving by or walking by will stop in ask questions when that happens right just like at home uh, all the dogs go whoop, 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 when somebody enters the business and um, some of them right want to go home and we'll make a beeline for that door if they're not in a kennel. I had one of my regulars yesterday. Good thing he's a good boy and he listens to me. Right, telling on myself. Okay, Daisy, we can't take a nap in the middle of the grooming though. I'd love to too, but let's stand up. So, as I was saying, um, at least he was a pet that I was familiar with and actually listens to me. Because he jumped right up on my corner counter and right over the top, he was not kenneled. His mom was on, uh, or just his mom had just dropped him off, and so um, right she saw that. And so had I not been quick to the door, it would have been very dangerous. If she can open the door, it's outside in the street. So, all I'm saying is some of these wishes that customers have or requests that customers have are not in the best interest of their pet. I also understand that not all pets like to be in kennels. So that's just something that we, we can work around, but we need people to also understand it's not a mean thing. We don't put them in kennels to be mean to them. We put them in kennels for their own safety and also for sanitary reasons. You got five dogs running around a groom shop. They're gonna be peeing and pooping and you're gonna be spending hours just right following the dogs around picking up poo and pee because they're just running, running loose. They don't understand. And so not a good preference. I'm weary of places that allow that. And that's just my opinion. Okay, so here's Miss Daisy. She's done. All right? Wasn't so horrible. Didn't take too long. Not too fidgety, not too fussy. And right, we're not doing anything fancy here. But she's um, cleaned up. Neater, cleaner. And more comfortable and that's all we hope to achieve so with that peace out